Autism is one of the, the most misunderstood disorders in the world of mental health. An estimated one in 88 children born will be diagnosed with autism. Here today to talk with us about her experience living with autism and discuss her new book, which is called The Autistic Brain Thinking Across the Spectrum, is Temple Grandin. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. So you were one of the first people diagnosed with autism. Well, I was born in 47, and that was just a few years before the first autism paper uh, came out. And I went to a neurologist who actually didn't know anything about autism, but I had no speech, all the classic autistic symptoms when I was two and a half, and I was diagnosed with some kind of brain damage because they just didn't know. And then a few years later, I got the autism diagnosis, but I got into really good early educational intervention. Great speech therapist uh, that worked with kids in the basement of our house that was as good as any program today. Well, how instrumental were your parents in helping you find the diagnosis? Well, they were just interested in getting me to talk, and the neurologist uh, put me, had me go to the speech therapy school, and then mother hired a nanny when I was three who just played constant turn-taking games. You gotta teach these kids turn-taking. You got a two-year-old or three-year-old that's not talking, I don't care what it's diagnosed, you gotta do a lot of therapy, a lot of hours and hours and hours of one-to-ones to engage that kid. So tell, what was your childhood like? Well, I was fairly verbal by four, and actually I had quite a good childhood. I loved to fly kites and airplanes and, and, and um, do craft projects with other kids. And I think it's horrible how so many schools have taken out the hands-on classes, because yeah. those were great activities that I did with other children. High school was a nightmare of bullying and teasing. And yeah. the only places where I was away from that was the specialized interests, like horseback riding and electronics lab. So when you were a child, though, did any of the other children ask, like, or play with you, or ask, is there something wrong, or what? Well, the thing is, I was very good at art and very good at crafts and making things. And other kids wanted to go make stuff with me, like we'd mm. go make a model gas station or something like wow. that. Yeah. <laughs> other That's kids rather thought that was some. Um, yeah, that was yeah. one of my projects. Other kids thought that was some. Um, that was pretty cool, because I was very good at building things and making things. It was high school where everything went wrong, where kids were no longer interested in projects. How, uh, how would you describe your way of thinking, Temple, and how does it differ from uh, anybody else? Well, I'm a total visual thinker, and if you saw the HBO movie, it shows how my mind thinks in pictures. And Which HBO movie did you see? Oh, that Temple Grandin HBO yeah, that movie. Was a great and movie. I thought everybody thought in pictures. And it wasn't until I wrote one of my earlier books, Thinking in Pictures, I thought everybody thought in pictures. And then in my book, The Autistic Brain, I explain how I discovered how some other people on the autism spectrum have other types of specialized thinking. Such as what? Mathematical thinking. This is the kind of kid where in fourth grade he's super good in math, needs help in reading, so you need to advance him forward in math. Don't make them do baby math. And then you got the little word thinkers. They know all the facts about their favorite stuff. We got to work on building the kids' area of strength. And my area of strength was art, and I turned that into my uh, livestock design business using my art skills. Now it's a life, li uh, livestock, like livestock, livestock like with cows. Well, that and... steak probably was handled a piece of equipment I designed. When that beef was on the hoof, I just I invented a piece of equipment called the Center Track Restrainer System. And if you want to see how my livestock stuff works, you can look up Beef Plant Video Tour with Temple Grandin. But what, you went to a livestock yard one day and well, you might, I started out. Uh, you know, my aunt's ranch, my high school had some dairy cattle, uh, and I took care of the horse barn when I was in high school. Uh, that started, you know, my interest there in animals, and then I started designing facilities for feed yards out in Arizona. And just build up my freelance business one little project at a time. Can I jump back to something you said, yeah. Temple? You talked about you think in images pictures, and, yeah. I, and in pictures. Yeah. I, I feel like I do. I remember things more visually when I see things. Can you elaborate on what you mean by you think in Well, that's pictures? probably why you're in TV and you're not in radio. <laughs> I find that, that a lot of radio people don't think in images. Let's, yeah. uh, every thought I have is a picture. My mind kind of works like a you know, visual search engine. Why don't you just give, uh, ask me to think about something, and not something, not something ordinary like house or car, something kind of different, something I can't see here, and I'll tell you how my mind accesses it. A right. red light. A red, a red light. traffic light. I, I am seeing this, uh, this traffic light they have in Mexican customs, where if it turns green, they don't search your bags, and if it turns red, they search your bags. Wow. Oh. Then, there's another traffic light, 
that um, we have this one big pig, pig slaughter plant and they don't want the pigs squealing because they're stressed and if they squeal too much then the light turns red. Oh, so that's how so it's, uh, these are all experiences yeah. you've had yeah, with that's these right. sorts of oh. lights. And, and um, they come up as a series of pictures. Okay, now I'm seeing getting a ticket from a policeman one time and I did not run a red light. <laughs> you know, but things are coming up as a series of still pictures. Okay. Okay, I'm now saying, okay, traffic lights at various intersections in Fort Collins where I live. And there's two of them that have speed cameras on them. So, boy, you better stop. You see Are you seeing what? several images at once, or is it one at a time? It's one at a time. They come up like slides. Now, if I, if I hold the image there, then it can start to turn into a video. But they come up as a series of still pictures, and then I can get off the subject. Okay, I'm on, now I'm seeing the uh, King Super's Market, where a grocery shop that's near the intersection with the speed camera. Wow. See, that's coming you know, up as a picture. Temple, we, we have a picture of an MRI that was done at the University of Utah in 2010. Yep. And can you explain what it is that we're seeing here? Uh, you got the black and white version uh -huh. of that because you get the color version of it. That part in the middle is bright blue. And I have an asymmetry of the ventricles. And basically what's happened there, my left parietal area is full of water, full of cerebellar spinal fluid. And that's why I'm so terrible in math. But if you go on the USA Today website and type Temple Grandin in, you're going to find a huge visual um, circuit there. But the right side is the, the right side is that of the well, screen. Yes. Is that your brain? Is yeah, that a scan the, of your yeah, brain? That's me. And okay. The other one is the control, and uh, that you know kind of a V-shaped thing. That's the ventricles full, filled with cerebral spinal fluid, and uh, kind of my math department's kind of trashed. I absolutely couldn't do algebra, but I've got mm -hmm. some other circuits in my brain that really good for visual thinking. See, kids that get diagnosed with different kinds of, um, of um, you know, autism, dyslexia, ADHD, and all these different kinds of labels, learning problems, um, often have uneven skills. They'll be good at one thing and bad at something else. And we've got to build, balance? build yeah. on the thing they're good at. They can turn that thing they're good at into a career. Well, what okay. we want to talk about when we come back is some advice you may have for parents who suspect their child is dealing with the, okay. as autistic behavior, when you should be uh, alerted to this, and what happens as they get older, too. So don't go away. We're back with Temple Grandin in a moment.